I guess that brings us to the, the first thing we should do, which is lay out what are the seven steps of RMS. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and kind of read those off at a very high level. And then we're going to talk with Drew as we go through some of these steps and kind of figure out what does this look like in the real world? Where are the pain points? Where are the, you know, the, 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 the bodies buried, I guess, uh, uh-huh. as you start dealing with the stuff in the real world. So uh, when we look at the seven steps, as we said, it is a lifestyle, a life cycle. So it starts out with prepare. And during the prepare phase, you're going to be doing all the essential activities to prepare your organization to be able to manage your security and your privacy risks. When you look at RMF, really, there's two big risk areas they focus on. One is the security risks or the cybersecurity of your organization. And the second is the privacy risks because of all the data breaches that occur. And so these are two main areas you're going to be focused on. The second step is to categorize. During the categorize phase, we're going to be categorizing our systems and all the information that it processes, stores, and transmits based on an impact analysis. And this goes back to what Drew said when we start talking about right sizing. Yes, you can categorize a system as, you know, extremely important and needs to be protected at all costs, but if it's going to cost a billion dollars to protect this thing and it's only protecting a, a piece of data that's worth a dollar, that doesn't make a lot of sense either. So you want to make sure you're categorizing things in the right mind based on the information that's processing and the level of that information. The third step is, uh, is select. When you're selecting, you're going to be going through the control sets, uh, which are located in the NIST special publication 800-53 the same one that we referenced back in our NIST cybersecurity framework course as one of the mm-hmm. places you can get controls from, and this is why these work together, and you're going to select the controls based on the risk assessment of the systems and the data you're trying to protect. Then we get to step four. This is where we're going to implement. So we want to implement all those controls we selected. For instance, we said we're going to implement two-factor authentication. We're going to use data at rest encryption. Now we have to go put all those things into the system, and that's where the implement step is. Then we get down to our next step, which is to step five, which is to assess. Now that we've implemented our controls, we need to assess to determine if those controls are in place, if they're working right, and if they're giving us the results that we expected. For example, if we said we're going to protect the system using multi-factor authentication, and we decide to use an SMS text code for that, and then we find out that those can be easily hacked or bypassed, well, that's not giving us the protection we want, so maybe we want to move to an RSA key fob token solution instead for our multi-factor authentication. That's the idea of assess. Is this working the way we intended? Then we get to number six, which is our authorized step. In authorize, this is where your senior officials start making risk-based decisions to authorize the systems to operate. And in every organization, whether you're a government organization or a civilian organization, somebody should be making a decision of when you can hook something up to the network. And that senior official, whoever that is, is going to be responsible for all the risk that is now being accepted by that organization because somebody has to make that determination. And then the final thing we do is step seven, which is monitor. At this point, we're going to continuously monitor our systems and monitor all of our controls to make sure they're working the way they should, to make sure the risk is at the level we thought it was. And if those risks start creeping up and getting higher, then we want to go back and iterate again and start categorizing, selecting, implementing, assessing, authorizing, and monitoring again to make our systems more secure and reduce that risk again. And again, this all goes back to how you've categorized things back in step two so you know what level you need to meet. So... Um, Guys, do you think I did a decent job of, of covering the, uh, the 50,000 foot view? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely, Jason. All right, cool. 